Hello everybody, this is Vaitik from Metalvani and Metal Nation Radio and with us today we have Ville from Finnish Melodic Death Metal Giants Insomnium. How are we doing Ville? I'm doing great. Just came off work and I'm just uh, relaxing and lying on my sofa and calling you. Awesome. So, you know, you're you're back with an amazing uh, tour, you know, with, with Flesh God Apocalypse and Stamina. So it must have been an insane run of shows with these two bands. Yeah, it was a really good show, uh, a really good tour and a streak of good shows. So uh, it was quite short, so only three weeks, but we were playing every night. And then all the bands, Flesh God, Stamina, they were really good guys, and really nice guys, and we got along really well. And uh, we sold out quite a few venues um, and we had really good turnout and a lot of fans came to see us so so all in all it was probably best tour we had or one of the best tours we ever had so it was all good yeah it's a great feeling because the new album is out so you know must have been a, a relieving feeling for you guys as musicians because you know you wanted to play the new material live yeah of course it's always nice to when, when you get the new album finished and everything is mixed and yeah you actually get it out uh it's always nice to add some new songs to the live set and then it, it gives you a change and then of course we like the new songs and they turn out great so it was really nice to have a kind of mix and then because it was a headliner show we were playing almost one and a half hours every night so it was kind of good mix of old old songs and, and new songs and i think yeah it was great to give the fans what they want to hear being able to play such a long shows and then offer songs from across all the albums. So it was pretty good. That's awesome. And you also have got a pretty exciting tour coming up, the North American tour with Dark Tranquility, your brothers. And then you also have a one-man army tour coming up with Omnium Gatherum and Enciferum. So 2015 looks like pretty much jam-packed for you guys. Yeah, it seems to be... Uh, it seems really busy, but in a good way, of course. Right. It's, it's great to go back to North America and on tour with Dark Tranquility, they're really nice guys and a great band, so it's it's an honor to share the stage with them. And then, of course, the European tour with MC Perum, uh, I think it's really strong package, and, and, and uh, it will be a bit hard for the Marcos to pull out two shows every night, but uh, I'm sure he can do it because he's such a pro. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, yeah I, I think it'll be a good tour as well, and, and it's very competitive package, and and, and, and only Finnish band, so we have lots of uh, fans. All, all of the bands have lots of fans in, in Central Europe, so it would be a great tour. That's amazing. You, you're covering Canada, you're covering states, and you know a little bit of Mexico as well. So you know, it must be a different feeling because when you come to US, you'll have a different uh, you know set of fans over there, the kind of music they like, and and when it comes to a package like Dark Tranquility and Insomnium, so it's a, it's a treat for all melodic death metal fans. Yeah, I think so. Like. In the USA, you can you can have all kind of different tours. Uh, they they do mix different styles of bands, so that you could have like we were touring Epica and then and then Aelstorm, Insomnium. That was quite quite mixed and quite varied mix of bands, but mm-hmm. it turned out really well. And then you were able to pursue some of the Epica fans onto your side and so on. And then and I think like now now we have strictly melodic death metal tours, so it will be a bit different crowd, I think. Uh, but uh, Hopefully we have two shows, a lot of sold out shows. Uh, people come come and check us out. Also, the new Dark Tranquility album that came came out a while ago. It's really mm-hmm. good, and then uh, I think it's great to offer. I think the best best dead metal band, melodic death metal band there, they are in Europe at the moment. So Absolutely. we are we're spoiling spoiling USA and Canada. <laughs> right. No, we have all these, you know, the, the year-end lists coming out, like top 10 heavy metal albums of 2014 and stuff like that. And Insomnium have featured at the top of quite a number of lists. So, you know, did you guys anticipate that, you know, this album will have such a massive response? No, of course, you kind of hope that your album, every album will do better than your previous one and you will get somewhere new and then the things will hit off a bit better. Mm-hmm. But... I mean, you always feast for that, but you, you can't be sure. You can you can only constrain on doing as good album as possible, and then hope for the best. And, and of course, it boils down to luck, um, and then many many factors. Sometimes the album might be good, but but kind of like just get the promotional push, and then just uh, 
maybe the album just needs to land on on on, on right, uh, right journalist in a big big magazine and and he starts to like that and then boost up the word and and then yeah then you get this kind of chain reaction of people starting to like you so I guess it's also a question of perseverance just believing of you do and and right. just doing putting the work work in and and then finally people start to recognize you so absolutely now shadows of the dying sun is definitely one of in so many names greatest works so far so you know when we talk about the album what were the ideas that you know led up to the making of this album well we started to write the music uh in the beginning of 2012 mm -hmm. and um, the idea was to concentrate on on spent the most of the year just writing the album and uh, recording that but of course you got a couple of tours that messed up the schedule a bit uh but yeah i think we didn't have any 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 major plan we just started to do music and then i think it's kind of this process that feeds back into you what you're writing so you get something ready and then that kind of takes your next step and True. what True. will the next song sound like and then so so we didn't plan too much, I think. We just concentrated. When we had good ideas, okay, let's make this idea to a song. And some, some songs were easy to write. Some, some took a bit more time and, and a bit more try out. But I think we didn't have any, any major plan. The major plan probably was that we didn't want to constrain ourselves too much. So we just want to concentrate on writing as good songs as possible. And we didn't think about if these sounds right that's really great. how it sounds if it's yeah if it's heavy fast or slow or whatever if there's black metal influences we didn't care as long as it works and it sounds good we are happy and and, and that's how we went right. and how how we approach the album that's all matters absolutely true now this is also the first album featuring the talent of marcus van hala so how is it working yes. with him? I mean, it's been three years since he joined the band. So, you know, did he come up with some material or, you know, something which he brought something fresh to the table? Yeah, absolutely. So it's always, always you have him. Of course, he's a fantastic player and, and he's a really good songwriter as well. So he, he wrote a couple of songs on the new new album and, and they're really good songs. And then, of course... He was able to inject some some of his own influences to songs I wrote or Neil wrote. So he was bringing, for example, more guitar solos and also in general just affecting the arrangements of the songs and, and harmonies and, and, and whatnot. So, of course, everybody's always bringing their own influences. Drummer is bringing his own style of right. playing even though he wouldn't write the songs or making it make any melodies and so on but everybody's bringing their own own beat and 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 then and I, I think it's essential to have that influence and interaction to actually absolutely. make the songs alive and, 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 and as good as possible absolutely true now you know we talked about marcus vanhala but what about you the riff master you know you create some of the amazing songs on you know the the as, as a fan, Insomnium tracks have always given me a surprise. So you don't actually let your fans down. Well, that's great to hear. So you don't want to let our fans down or let ourselves down. Mm -hmm. If we would let our fans down, it would feel like we're letting ourselves down and we're not being too hard or too critical for ourselves. I think because uh, I think the most important thing for me is to write as good music as possible. And, and and release only good albums. There's so much crap out there all the time, and, and people focusing on just getting the album out and getting on tour and not really putting the time in writing as good album as possible. So, in that sense, I feel like music scene, metal scene, has become a bit more shallow than right. it used to be. People just want to go get an album out so they can go on tour and sell merch and then make a living out of it, and then. And it's a tough world, and um, I, I, I can I can understand that point. If you want to do this for your living, you need to be uh, releasing new stuff all the time, and then right. it's quite hard to concentrate both on songwriting and then just being constantly on tour. Absolutely. So uh, I get that, but I think I think it's important in this world to just concentrate more on music, and then I think that matters more. 
Absolutely true. Now, you also put some surprises on the music as well. I mean, uh, there are more atmospheric sounds, more blast beats. So were all these changes planned or it just, you know, happens spontaneously? Well, it's it just like we do listen all kind of music all the time from extreme metal to a lot of softer music and um, all kind of stuff, really. So the, the specter of music is really, really big and a wide range mm-hmm. and um, yeah, and so we, we just—it's it, also like you want to kind of like break the old old patterns you you've used in your songwriting, kind of come up with something new, and then just like okay, let's use blast beat and then do something different with it, and then let's let's kind of play with play with that, and then mm-hmm. there's a lot of—I mean, like music, even in metal music, you can have a quite wide range of expression mm-hmm. and different styles, and I still keep it your own in a way we can have quite quite a, I mean with insomnium we can do pretty much everything we don't want to go soft all soft like opus or just go for really broke but but still we can have all these all these kind of different really soft parts and really easy parts and then really aggressive part and, and I think that's kind of essence of the insomnium sound and I, I'm quite happy to work with that kind of range of different styles and expression because it, I mean there's only you're not limiting yourself too much to Absolutely. one 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 small category but you can actually do whatever you like true true absolutely true now there's something about the bands which are actually signed to century media for instance insomnium you guys released an album uh, shadows of the dying sun then after a few months Sanctuary releases an album, The Year the Sun Died. So what's with this concept of the dying sun? <laughs> the, the concept of the dying sun, uh, Shadow of the Dying Sun, the title in our album is that shadows, basically they depict uh, humans, we cast the shadows, um, and of course it's created by the sun. Um, but also, it also kind of um, describes the short-lived life we have, so we born and we die out, and um, in, in, in a lot of perspective, it's very short time we're on this planet, and then even even the sun will die at some point, turn into supernova, right. and then just ex- explode. So, so nothing's really constant, and then um, that's probably the main theme and the main kind of uh, title under which we have put all the other stories and now. Other songs, so it is. It is kind of this ephemerality of life, short-livedness of life that the title actually tries to describe. To describe that, right? Even even the Sanctuary guys said the same thing. So it looks like the concept is same. Even Sanctuary's album was a concept album, so it's really great to see how you guys actually had a different perspective, but the 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 message was actually the same. Yeah, yeah. It is funny. People are thinking same same things. I guess. Right. Now, you also released you know, Revelation and While We Sleep, the videos, and, and I kind of felt that they have that shadows concept on them as well. So it clearly had that, you you had that idea perfectly to even reflect the concept of this album through your music videos as well. Yeah, and, and it's quite funny because we didn't really had anything to do with the music videos. Uh, well, we had an influence on Revelation, but it was really minor. And with the while this sleep video, we just gave free hand and, and all all the artistic freedom to the music video directors. So we didn't really tell them to do. And then they came up. What they came up was just by coincidence. Sure. But it's quite 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 cool to see that they they kind of get same from the music. Well, we have some kind of idea about music and the stories behind that. And then just sending them lyrics and the song, they they might come up something similar visually. So it's quite cool. So there's something something there in the music that evokes these kind of images emotions. in general. Yeah, emotions, yeah. Absolutely. That's really great to hear, Willie. So, Willie, you as a musician have grown a lot over the years. So I assume if I ask, have to ask you this question to, let's say, uh, tell your three albums that actually changed your life as a, you know, as a musician? Uh, well, well, it has to be uh, well, two classical ones, uh, Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction, and then Guns N' uh, Metallica Black Album. Mm-hmm. Those were the, probably the biggest ones that I kind of 
kind of enlightened the spark to craft the guitar yourself and learn to play and I start doing music and then kind of kind of enlightened the dream, lit up the dream about having own band and writing own music. And I, I guess uh, there are actually so many bands, but like one earliest big influence is, of course, well, the whole Gothenburg scene, the tranquility in right. place, but after At that, uh, Opeth, yeah, the gates, uh, but after that, uh, Opeth was really big influence, and um, and uh, especially Morning Rise album was the one I started to listen from Opeth first, and I, I just fell, fell in love with the complexity, and then, and the kind of like awkwardness and uniqueness of the music. So that was really big influence later on as well. But there's been so many bands, it's really hard to, hard to choose, put right? it down to, yeah, actually put it down to three albums because there's been probably 300. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, actually, to my surprise, you're probably the only musician whom I've spoken to and who have said that you were, you know, you were inspired from Metallica's Black Album, whereas almost all of them wanna, you know, wanna take inspiration from Killer Mall or maybe Master of Puppets. Yeah, well, of course, I'm, I'm a big fan of the other albums as well, but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit younger, probably, and I'm, um, I would just happen to be at the right time when right, the Black yeah. Album right, came right, up, right. and then it, it became a really big album in Finland and in Europe in general, and then that was the first album that kind of picks up my yeah maybe I wasn't too much in the extreme metal in the beginning or be as much trash metal and so on so the black album was kind of easy way into Metallica world because they had well they had the aggression but a lot of melodies and harmonies and then, and that kind of opened up this more the extreme world as well absolutely now Billy is there any message from you to your fans who will be eagerly waiting for to, to see you guys in North America? Well, it's, it's great to get get there again. We're really on to come there with Dutch Anglity. It's only two weeks and we'll be flying there and I'm, I'm just expect great great shows every night and um, good fun times and then um, we will bring a lot of merch so support us and buy, buy some and then um, let's have a good time. Awesome. So what are the plans of coming to India? Are you aware of your, you know, following here? <clears throat> yeah, so we've been, we, we've got a lot of requests in India. And then unfortunately, uh, today, all the, we've been always clashing with time timetables. Time but table, we are, right? we're looking yeah. to, yeah, it's sometimes kind of hard, but we, we, we definitely want to compare. It's not something we're, we're dissing you or anything. Uh, we just want to, get it right and then we're, we're planning to make a trip to Asia and then, then do India as well at the same time probably so hopefully next year we'll get there and then awesome. get to play and then get to play to you and meet Indian fans so Absolutely. that would be really great really. it'll really be an honor once again Willie thank you very much for sparing some time I'll catch you on road and I wish you all the best for your future you guys just keep your fans happy and I really love the way you guys maintain your artistic integrity as well so hats off to you guys thank you it was my pleasure have a, have a good Friday